The 2024 Renault Captur E-Tech Hybrid and the 2024 Ford Puma Hybrid are excellent choices for an eco-friendly small SUV. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison to help you decide which one might be best for you. 2024 Renault Captur E-Tech Hybrid Powertrain, 1.6-liter gasoline engine paired with two electric motors for a combined output of 140 horsepower. Fuel efficiency, up to 57 miles per gallon combined, estimated by Renault. Cargo space, 15.6 cubic feet behind the rear seats, 43.9 cubic feet with the rear seats folded. Passenger space, spacious for a small SUV, with comfortable seating for five adults. Features, standard features include an 8.0-inch touchscreen infotainment system, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, automatic climate control, and a suite of driver assistance features. Warranty, 3 years 36,000 miles bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, 5 years 60,000 miles powertrain warranty. 2024 Ford Puma Hybrid Powertrain, 1.0-liter turbocharged gasoline engine paired with an electric motor for a combined output of 126 horsepower. Fuel efficiency, up to 42 miles per gallon combined, estimated by EPA. Cargo space, 17.8 cubic feet behind the rear seats, 40.9 cubic feet with the rear seats folded. Passenger space, comfortable for four adults, but a bit tight for five. Features, standard features include an 8.0-inch touchscreen infotainment system, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto, automatic climate control, and a suite of driver assistance features. War warranty, 3 years 36,000 miles bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, 5 years 60,000 miles powertrain warranty. Choosing between the Renault Captur E-Tech Hybrid and Ford Puma Hybrid. The Renault Captur E-Tech Hybrid is the more fuel-efficient choice, and it also offers more cargo space. However, the Ford Puma Hybrid is slightly more affordable and has a bit more cargo space behind the rear seats. The Puma also has a slightly larger warranty. Here are some additional factors to consider. Availability The Renault Captur is not sold in the United States, so availability may be a factor depending on your location. Driving Dynamics, the Ford Puma is generally considered to be the more fun-to-drive car. Brand Reputation, Ford is a more established brand than Renault, so you may be more confident in its long-term reliability. Ultimately, the best choice for you will depend on your individual needs and priorities. If you prioritize fuel efficiency and cargo space, the Renault Captur E-Tech Hybrid is the better option. If you're looking for a more affordable and fun-to-drive car, the Ford Puma Hybrid is a good choice. If a car could ever be compared to pro surfer Kelly Slater, it's probably the Renault Captur. You see, while it wasn't the first small SUV on the market, its perfect timing meant it could ride the crest of a wave that's become a flood of high-riding compact cars. Since then, the Captur has evolved, retaining the distinctive looks that made it so popular but improving inside and underneath. There are plusher interior plastics, for example, and the Captur has had a slight growth spurt, so there's now more space for passengers and their luggage. If the Ford Puma name sounds rather familiar to you, well, there's a good reason for that. It was originally a small coupe back in the late 90s, and it was a jolly good one, too, it even picked up a what car? Car of the Year Award. The trouble was, the original Puma didn't sell particularly well, which might be why, when it returned to the Ford lineup some two decades later, it had morphed into a small SUV. It still looks sportier than most of the other cars in this class, though, and is more fun in other ways, as we'll come on to explain. Under the bonnet, Renault gives you a choice of a petrol engine with 89 brake horsepower or hybrid and plug-in hybrid PHEV, options. The punchiest power figure belongs to the PHEV, called the E-Tech, which combines a petrol engine with an electric motor to reduce emissions and allow you to do some electric-only driving. All these updates were needed if the Captur is going to stay competitive in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of small SUVs but has it done enough? Does it drive as well as the Ford Puma? In terms of size and price, the Puma's closest rivals are the big-selling Hyundai Kona, Nissan Juke, the Skoda Kamiq, the VW Tygo and the VW Tiroc. If you want serious performance, there's a hot version called the Puma ST, which we've reviewed separately. 
It has almost 200 brake horsepower along with bespoke suspension to help it with round corners. The engine range for the Renault Captur range kicks off with the TCE90, an 89 brake horsepower turbocharged 1.0-liter three-cylinder petrol that comes exclusively with a six-speed manual gearbox. If you're hoping for the peppiness you get from the entry-level seat Arona, Skoda Kamek or VW T-Cross you'll find it disappointingly sluggish. There's very little urgency unless you work it hard. That's why we'd suggest stepping up to the mid-spec E-Tech Full Hybrid 145. It's best suited to trundling around in traffic at low speeds, but is also punchy enough when you put your foot down, sprinting from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 10.6 seconds. That can't match the Ford Puma 1.0 EcoBoost 155 MHEV for pace or smoothness though. At the top of the range sits the 158 brake horsepower E-Tech plug-in hybrid 160. It's the quickest version you can buy, officially hitting 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 8.6 seconds, but its efficiency will arguably be its biggest draw. It can officially drive on electricity alone for around 30 miles, although we'd expect less than that in real-world driving. All engines for the regular Ford Puma are 1.0-liter petrols with 48-volt mild hybrid MHEV technology, which can shut the engine off to save fuel when you're coming to a stop. As you engage a gear, the engine fires back into life in the blink of an eye, and a small electric motor adds a bit of zip to help you on your way. Even the entry-level EcoBoost MHEV 125 was able to accelerate from 060 mph in 9.6 seconds in our tests, far quicker than any Nissan Juke or the VW Tiroc 1.0 TSI. It pulls reasonably well from low revs and maintains cruising speed effortlessly. If you want more pace, the EcoBoost MHEV 155 is much faster, hitting 60 mph from a standstill in just 8.5 seconds. That's as quick as much pricier small SUVs, including the Audi Q235 TFSI. You get a 6-speed manual gearbox on all Pumas as standard, with a 7-speed automatic gearbox available as an option. Suspension and Ride Comfort Low-speed ride isn't one of the captor's strengths and it doesn't deal with pockmarked urban road surfaces particularly gracefully, in fairness, neither do the Kia Stonic and the Nissan Juke. Due to their extra weight, the heavier hybrid versions are the least comfortable ride-wise. Thankfully, as you head out of town and speeds increase, the ride improves. It never totally settles though. You see, it fidgets even on smooth-looking sections of motorway, and over bigger dips and crests it can get a bit bouncy. Once again, the hybrids suffer the most, as do versions with the larger 18-inches alloy wheels. If comfort is particularly important to you, it's worth turning your attention to the best-riding small SUVs, including the Kamek and the VW Tiroc. If ride comfort is a priority, you'd be better off looking at the Kamek or Tiroc. Both have softer suspension, which means you feel less impact from lumps and bumps as they pass beneath the car. In fact, if you want the most comfortable Puma, titanium trim is your best bet as it's the only version to come without the even firmer sport suspension fitted to all ST-Line variants. Even so, the Puma is far from a bone shaker and never gets uncomfortable, it just follows the contours of the road more closely than the Skoda Kamek or the Tiroc. There's a positive trade-off, too, better body control equals less bouncing along undulating country lanes. We think most buyers will quite like the compromise. The Jiggly Juke jostles you around in your seat far more.